Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Trader Summit. And with me again is Mark Randall from, but now I'm going to get this correct, alpha-mind.net. Mark, one of the co-founders, welcome back. How are you? Hey, good to see you. I'm glad we're going to be talking of the whiskeys of Western Scotland today. I look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's pretty early in the morning here for me, but, you know, if, if, if I got to take it never, for the never team. Never too late for me. Always yeah, home. There you Always go. Home. Okay. Da, 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 da. Perfect. And it's full. And it's full. <laughs> Well, let's see what happens by the time we are finished here in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So uh, welcome back. And, and I want to say I, I really enjoy spending time with you because, you know, just just hearing what both you and Stephen do at alpha-mind, alphamind.net, I, I love it because, you know, performance coaches, trading coaches, I think is an important factor to the success, the future success of traders moving forward. And, and uh, so getting your ideas and the way you approach different people and different groups is, is important. And, um, and I think the, these are great conversations to have. Now, you've probably worked with all sorts of traders, you know, from, from traders, institutional types uh, that have been in the markets for, you know, 20, 30 years that maybe just need a little bit of tweaking, but I'm sure you've, you've spent some time with some, some newer traders that are, are fairly, uh, you know, newer, I say newer, let's say within five years of their, their, you know, their trading career, what, what, based on your experience, what are some of the things, the big differences you see between traders that have been doing this for a long time and traders that have been, you know, are newer into the business, if you will? Well, look, thanks for having me on the, uh, the show, Blake. Great, great to be back. It's um, nice to have you. And uh, the important subject, I think what we're, on, what we're going on about today is the stuff of the base. You know, everyone needs to have a proper base. And um, in the bank um, that I worked before, I was um, very much interlaced with the uh, the, grad, the graduate intake stream into the markets business. And a lot of those were kind of, um, you know, future traders. They were already trading often on desks and... Um, some of them had uh, their own background accounts, having developed it from university, and were kind of thinking that it was something they wanted to professionalize. But anyway, so they were they were early in the space. Um, what was originally interesting to me is that the people that you'd have thought would would make it, um, if you kind of read a CV and thought, oh yeah, this guy's going to do well, yeah, you'd be so you'd be so wrong, right? So, as a rule of thumb. Um, the economists, the people that studied economy, economics at university didn't often have the, the skill set for trading. And yet the people that studied um, an engineering-based um, uh, sort of curriculum, sure, like civil engineering, like, uh, like chemical engineering or something like that, that had sort of a quasi-mathematical spatial awareness kind of uh, skills, they became, they became the traders. That's so interesting, you know, and, and I've always wondered this and, and, and I'm going to let, I want, I want you to obviously expand on this, but I've met so many people over the last, especially, let, let me, let me just back up a little bit for, let's go to in a financial Twitter. We call it thin twit. You know, I've been on Twitter for 12, 13 years. Um, I've met a lot of traders. I've met a lot of economists. I've had conversations. Sometimes I think People, some economists are so smart and so intelligent that they end up talking themselves out of into bad trades and sometimes out of good trades because they think that they know better. I, I don't know. Is it do, is that is that kind of what you're alluding to? I, I think it's just that that they're not involved in the kind of the flow of market when they're talking economics, right? It tends to be more macro for a start. Yeah, now, of course, there's, 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 you know, macro traders are out there. That, that's fine. That's cool. But we're, a, a retail trader is not going to not going to likely tr start trading as a macro trader. Sure. Right? So um, it's a different time scale. It's more of a literal type of process. You know, economists tend to write articles. And whenever I used to get, you know, even strategy from economists, I always used to bloody well tell them, you know, make it really, really clear what the strategy is and make that strategy clear really, really early. 
Um, and that was in the days when we could share strategy. I know things have changed now with Chinese wars and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, they, they really like to tell a story. And by the time the area, the, the, the story is finished, everyone's in the strategy and the strategy is over. <laughs> You know, right, right, right. So I think their, <clears throat> their mindset is kind of a bit too professorial. Um, I think it's it, it's intellect and it's part of the fabric of what market is and what markets yeah. are. You yeah. kind of need that. You kind of need need those people in it, but you need them at that professorial type of level. Now, I'm not saying that every economist is going to flunk it as a, as a retail trader. Sure. Um, because it all depends on what, what other skills you're building at the same time and just whether you can tone down um, a skill set that you've got and tone and tune into a, a more required skill set for trading. Um, and I think if you've got that agile mindset and awareness of just your own capability, you should be able to do that. But then it's a case of, well, who's mentoring you? Who's coaching you? Because, you know, to do that alone without any real experience is super difficult. And so when you're talking about the new traders, Mark, going into, you know, the, 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 the newer class, if you will, and you've got, you know, people on paper where they, you think, wow, this, this guy or this gal should be a good trader, but they, it doesn't always equate to that. What do you think, is the differentiator, if you will, is it is it the person that can actually you know follows a set of rules and then they they abide by those rules no matter what? Uh, they have better risk reward. They because they don't they don't think they can outsmart the the market. They know you know hey when it's here I need to get out that type of thing. What 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 do you see is like the difference between the two? Well, he has an acceptance that there's it's a learning process that doesn't end. Okay. Um, right, and I think th those that want to go into the practical sense of applying skills and start with low risk, learn by mistakes, you know, build the story, uh, you know, review, review strategy, revise strategy, you know, and evolve that way. I think they're the people that tend to be successful, that, that sort of keep the involvement, but they manage risk, they keep exposure, they try things, they're, they're creatively looking at the market as a, as a very broad beast and of course part of that decision making is what the hell am i going to trade because you may have a personality or a or, or a risk appetite that's focused in one direction you might be tight trading a product that's entirely entirely not the right product for you yeah you know you you, you, you might be um you might be a, a longer term trader looking at short-term swing trading or you know th there may be a total mismatch as to about as to your profile as a trader yeah compared with what you've jumped into to trade because maybe a buddy's been doing it but what you kind of need to step back is doing okay well what do i have a sense of knowing about because if you if you tend to know some aspect of the product it kind of helps right so if you've yeah. got a little bit of knowledge about what what equities are and what dividends are and all that kind of well well okay well you're comfortable with equities but if you got if you do happen to have a sense about crypto and you follow that story and crypto's your thing, then well, crypto's your thing. But you know, tread with care. You know, I think so. That, there's all these flavors out there of products that a, 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 an early trader, particularly retail, that kind of just gets the bandwidth. Okay, you can trade the world. What are you going to trade? Well, you know, do you want to trade Asian products in London time? Do you want to trade US products when it's getting thin in the morning and this stuff? And, you know, do you really understand the calendar events that are going to come out for particular products that could totally ruin you without you realizing that danger is approaching at 1.30 on the first Friday of the month? You know, that type of stuff, right? Yeah. A lot of people are green to that information and kind of get involved. And it's that it's those moments of, bursting volatility that to you as a novice has come out of nowhere but from a professional they're kind of they kind of know where these you know stand back and watch moments are and if you don't have a sense of stand back and on watching in your mentality of the market as as a as a new trader to the marketplace then the market's going to kill you you know the market will will take you out so you just need to start with all of those things really in mind so that almost takes you back to a, a pre-trade period of time where you've got to build this base of all these levels of awareness you need to be aware of 
And then you walk towards a market of choice with the right risk profile, the right product you know, choice and what whatnot. And then you enter it and you start to gauge what goes on at certain times. And, you know, how, how am I managing a fast market? How am I managing a, you know, a sudden loss? And how am I moving on from that? And, and what, what's my state? You know, do I, do I just go like that and, you know, collapse? Or do I take it and move on? And how quickly can I reset myself to the next level of awareness required? So you kind of, kind of, all those things kind of need to be happening before you start putting some really big risk on the table. Because if any of those things are not tuned in properly, any one of them could kill you. I mean, it could be the most bizarre thing that kills you. So, you know, Mark, taking like myself as a currency trader, predominantly a currency trader, I trade 24 hours a day, you know, and, and I'm sure crypto, people trading in the crypto asset class are like me, um, but it even it's even worse because cryptos trade all weekend long. Um, but if you're trading equities, you know, you, you have a certain time where equities will close, futures will close. You might be work, worried about what happens in Asia or Europe or US overnight, wherever you're at, but it's, it's less of an issue. So I think time has a lot to do with how you approach the market as well. How much, what, what time do you have to, to trade uh, around your personal life and schedule is that is that correct yeah i mean the way i talk about this with uh, with other professional traders i have to have the problem of never never quite knowing when to switch off and being in i'm home honey mode right rather than yeah. i'm trading mode and taking a trade to bed with me at night literally mentally waking up at three to check where the trade is waking up at five to check where the trade is waking up exhausted if you get any sleep and doing the same again five days a week which goes on right and so you need to kind of accept that the biggest dollar value of anything is time. Time is worth more than physical money. The more time you can have and keep on your side for the balance, what is life, the better. Because otherwise, you don't want to be the you know the richest trader in the planet with with no life story. Um, you know, it's not 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 a great space to be. So I think balance and approach is really really important. But uh, as I've described to quite a, quite a number of people, is that. You know, determine when your when your closing bell is as a person, right? The market has a closing bell, right? Yeah. NYSE, bing, end of trade. Not futures market, well, used to anyway. Bing, end, end of floor trading. Let's move on to whatever. And that was kind of like the end of that day. So as a as as a habit to pick up early, it's actually say saying to yourself that uh, I don't know six thirty p.m. every day. That is my market, my own market closing bell. When I'm basically, I, I'm leveling up my risk or I, I've come off of the trade, but 6.30 is my closing bell. And that's really, 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 and, and whatever happens after 6.30, whatever happens after 6.30, right? Because otherwise the market starts to own you rather than you own the market. You and know, that's... that's 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 those are some huge words mark and I, i'm going to tell you from personal experience i wish we would have had this conversation three years ago you know sometimes you're in a market it doesn't matter what market you're trading but the, the 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 market conditions aren't ideal for what you're trying to do and th this is the one business that i i think people need to understand and in my view that the hours that you put in doesn't always equate to profitability it's not that it's not, it doesn't work like that. Like, and I wish I would have known that, oh, if I'm putting in 16 hours a day sitting in front of my computer, that doesn't necessarily equate to I'm going to make more money. And I'll, I think a lot of people struggle with that as new traders. So what do you tell those people? Like, you know, because if, if I'm new to trading and, and I'm newer, let's say I'm newer, I think that is what a lot of people think is like, oh, well, you know, if I just sit here and I, and I do my analysis and I, you know, just keep going, that it's going to eventually equate to making money eventually. Right. But that isn't always the case. So what do you tell those people? Or people that are kind of guess stuck in this bad process sort of period. Yeah. You need to go, go out for a walk and come back and let's just talk about where you are and what you've learned. And because you, you need to unlearn these things. You need to de-weaponize this stuff that you're throwing at the market as a weapon because it's the wrong weapon. And then you need to rearm yourself with the stuff 
that's super important. So, you know, where have you picked up te technical analyst skills from? You can go to like the worst. There, there are so many crap places on the internet. I've seen people invent words. There was some guy <laughs> turned up at a business school in London, invented something called the Buffalo market. And he wasn't a markets guy. And um, so we had to, we wrote to this business school saying, yeah, you gotta be careful who you're engaging with because they're talking absolute bananas. Um, so I'd say, you know, golden source. And for, for me, certainly from a UK perspective, and I guess globally, the Society of Technical Analysts do a home study course that's outstanding and is that should be the base for anybody looking to do technical analysis because professionals, and it becomes a professional qualification recognized by big institutions and actually if you use alpha mind in capitals you get a discount going there so, so you know, you <laughs> hey, that, that was unintended i i didn't expect that one that's good um yeah you, you know and, right place. so you're right like and and like in the in the u.s or you know internationally too i think a lot of people you know will seek out a cmt you know chartered market uh, uh a cmt designation but what I, you know, again, I, I, I'm going to go back to the new trader and, and, you know, this, I think the, the new trader really has a lot to, of obstacles that they have to overcome. And I think this is good information for them. So I'm going to ask you, I want to ask you this and, and, and I, you may or may not have an answer for a new trader, but you know, new traders come to me and they say, they'll ask me, Hey, Blake, what is a good percentage I should be making in my first year of trading or my second year of trading? Do you, do you ever give people an answer to that question? Because I'm sure if I've been asked that question, you've been asked that question, like, you know, and, and it could be worded a little differently. Like in my first year or my second year of trading or by this time, I should be making X percent. What do you think? What, what do you say? What do you have as benchmarks? Do you, do you look at benchmarks as I have to make a certain percent or it's a certain uh, number of trades that I should be profitable before I can tweak this or what do you say about that? I mean, because those are questions that I think all new traders want to know. Forget measuring yourself because you'll upset yourself. <laughs> Warren Buffett's consistency is 20%. Right? Right. 20%. I mean, and he's got all the information in the world and all the traders in the world. And his, his benchmark return is something like 20% consistently. Okay. So if you think you're going to be 300% and 500% or catching the wave and whatever, the reality is in the whole in the whole market that actually even hedge funds have difficulty meeting like even five percent or whatever the numbers are, right? So, you know, so you got to be a little bit realistic about the fact that you're making money slowly. You're going to get a big win every now and then. It's how you manage your losses that becomes more important. Yeah, that it's almost man the cleverest trader is the guy that manages his losses uh, and, and can get out of a trade quickly and manage himself back into the next trade and. Yeah, you know, run it for as long as he's comfortable to run it because you're yeah, ideally meant to run your profits for as long as you can um, and cut your losses as quick as you can. So, you know, I think that they're the things that are super important. It's more about worrying about what to do with losses than what to do with profits. Well, there, there's something to be said about that. And I think a lot of people as traders, they get lost in the I could have made this much, but they're never managing what the downside risk is first. I, and me, me personally, when I'm dealing with a new trader, I say the first question you should be asking yourself is what is my risk? Not, you know, how much money can I make? What is my risk? And am I able to even stomach that risk to start? So, you know, as a new trader, I, 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 again, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, if you're a new trader out there, how do I find out more about what you do, Mark, uh, over at alpha-mind.net. How do I find out more about you? Um, well, it's alpha-mind.net. My personal website is themindteam.com, which is slightly more palatable. But that gets, gets you to my sort of uh, more personal, comprehensive stuff under Mark Randall Consultancy. Um, but um, the Alpha Mind podcast is out there too. So retail traders looking for you know, appropriate information with um, with market psychologists and veterans and retail traders. I know you've been on the show. Yeah. Um, the, Alpha, the Alpha Mind podcast is a competitor. <laughs> um, but, you know, we're out there. We're thought leaders and we connect to some big guys and we have outstanding conversations. So listen to podcast channels with the right sort of content. 
You know, um, what's interesting, that's Mark, that's is um, I, I actually spend my time now. Uh, I found myself over the last 12 months listening to a lot of podcasts, and I've been so excited to add your podcast to my to my library of my normal listening material. So thank you very much for, for doing what you do. And um, I, I want to say, you know, I, I really enjoy the time that I get to spend with you. Hopefully the new traders out there, especially the new ones for this particular episode, um, got some takeaways and some nice golden nuggets to take home with yeah. them uh, yeah. today. So I, I do appreciate your time. And I know the traders here at Trader Summit really appreciate you. And you guys can do you can show your appreciation by giving us a thumbs up if you're watching us on YouTube, if you're subscribed to the channel, uh, or if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, subscribe there so you can get this content for free. And then also um, make sure you click the, the link in the description below to get to Mark right on tradersummit.net. Um, Mark, thank you so much for your time. And I hope the next time that we get to speak, we're, we, we get to speak about maybe some different subject matter. More whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real pleasure, Blake. Uh, I think we're, we're pushing out outstanding work between us. Um, yet the there are so many people that are getting sucked into this world of trading without appropriate guidance. And, you know, some, some of it is is obvious, right? Some of it is, is obvious. But actually, perhaps it's obvious to us when we've got, like, you know, decades of experience and we've seen people, more people fail, even professionally, than we've seen succeed. So, um, yeah, there, there were some good, there were some good little nuggets, as you say, in there that um, hopefully will be invaluable to, to those that are listening and, and watching us. And uh, I can only wish you for the moment a very happy Christmas and a happy New Year. And I'm sure we'll speak again next quarter. Happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas to yourself and your family. And I will look forward to speaking to you this next time, hopefully right at the beginning of 2022. So thanks for joining us again, Mark. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Hey traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell notifications so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.